folks. Thanks for letting me inside your device today. My name is Daniel Kempling. Today we're going to talk about the Olympics of life, carrying on from the last episode, episode six in this ongoing series called The Project. If you want to find out the previous work, you'll find a link. That's in the invitation uh, of this work is to give quality uh, to your everyday, what some people might call mundane movements, and fill them with a quality that an Olympic athlete would give to their chosen event. And I think of something like, oh, take a, a judged event. Think of gymnastics uh, or figure skating. As I record this, it's February 2022, and actually the Olympics are on, and I've been enjoying those uh, true Olympics themselves. One of the things we're going to take a look at today is how to move in such a way that you keep your body safe, you develop the hip joint and protect it in such a way that it serves to keep your core stabilized, and it also is going to prevent you from beating up your low back, your lumbar extensors. In today's society, by far the number one orthopedic uh, problem or disease or uh, chronic injury that we're dealing with is low back strain. Part of it has to do with our way of sitting. We've been uh, stuffed into chairs since childhood. We've forgotten how to sit on our knees or to squat. We have, uh, you might say, a tendency to have this eight pound bowling ball on top of our neck, right? Run a little bit forward. And our body has an agenda to keep the head level and the chin level at all times. If we spend a lifetime in chairs, typically we're not sitting with a nice erect posture, right? Our pelvis tilts backwards. And as such, what do we do with our head? When our pelvis tilts backward, do we walk around like this? No, right? We stick our chins forward. And over the course of time, this imbalance creates an ongoing tension into our lumbar spine, into our small lumbar extensors. And then we worsen this by the way we pick things up. You've probably heard that term, lift with your legs. Well, what the heck does that mean, really? Well, let's take a look at that today. As part of your event that I'm inviting you to participate, not just today, but for the rest of your life, to give quality right, to your everyday mundane movements. Not only to keep yourself safe, but in a way to free yourself from uh, you might say an obsessive, overly cognitive approach to life. We use the term mindfulness, and I've mentioned in earlier work that I consider this a bit of a misnomer. What I believe we need to do is actually to encounter the world through our five sen senses and kinesthetically, right, with a sense of enjoyment and sacredness to our emotions. Give it quality. What we're going to take a look at today, first of all, is how to lift things off the floor. Our first Olympic event is going to be, that's right, picking up socks. Now, with every event, there's rules. And the picking up socks event has a few rules. I consider the body to be essentially a genius of motion. If you give your body quality requests, it's going to find the most remarkable ways to get things done efficiently, safely, elegantly even. But if you give it misaligned or poor quality requests, right? well, it's kind of like the programming term, garbage in, garbage out. The most common way that people pick things up off the floor is to just lean over, pick it up, right? What is the prime mover here, right? The prime mover are these really tiny lumbar extensors, right? This is like trying to drive a giant spike, right, with a tiny finishing hammer. No, you want a sledgehammer for that. Same thing when you pick something off the floor, you want to use the biggest tool for the job. And that's the legs. Now, 
Here's another rule that comes into this event. I'm going to use the term stabilize before you mobilize. What does that mean? Stabilize means you're going to corset your low back by a core contraction. Okay? And very simply put, a core contraction is drawing in right, the deeper muscles in your belly right, as if you're pulling your hand away right, from, right, or your belly away from your hand. To pick it up off the floor, we want to use the legs and we also want to engage the inner thigh. To stabilize, okay, I'm going to set my feet beyond the object I want to pick up. Right, make sure that the back is nice and flat. I have a sense of connected from crown to coccyx, from tailbone to the top of the head. I'm going to hold that as one line and I'm going to lead backwards by pushing the tailbone back. I grab the object, and here's the important parts, folks. We also, at this point, have the chance to reflect on the tragedy of male pattern baldness, but that's for another episode. Okay? From here, the stabilized part, when you come back up, draw the belly inward, eyes upward, and then drive the pubic bone forward with an exhalation. One more time, okay? Knees track over the feet, tailbone goes back, crown of the head is forward, grab, and this is important, when you come up, eyes up. And when you think about it, think about taking this pubic bone, right, below your belly button and pushing it straight ahead with the exhalation, belly in, and so each and every time. One of the challenges in picking up things like socks is we know they're not heavy, so we don't feel like we have to use our legs, engage our inner thigh, tie in our breath, contract our core. But every time that we lean and do this without contracting our core, without using our legs, right, we're exacerbating, irritating, Right? This tendency to overuse our lumbar extensors. And also, we don't engage the inner thigh muscles, the adductors, that have lovely names like, oh, pectineus and gracilis, the adductor longus brevis and magnus. Sounds like a nice Roman family, don't you think? Anyway, all these muscles, they serve to stabilize the hip joint. And they're super important right, for core contraction and the health and safety of both the hip joint and the knee. So I've got a heavier prop here. I've got a battery. Oh, it's maybe about 10 kilos. Right? But this is something I suggest to you folks. Imagine everything you're picking up is heavy. Right? If you've got a sack of cement, guaranteed you're going to keep it within the frame of your hips. You're going to exhale with the power band right? when you're exerting the most force. Right? So let's take a look at it again. Same action. Stabilize before you mobilize. Establish right, a wide stance. Knees track over the toes. Right? Come to the object. Connect. Now stabilize before you mobilize. Draw the belly inward. There's also a slight drawing up at the pelvic floor. It's kind of a jokey way to say it, but it's almost like just resisting a fart. <laughs> really, when you engage the pelvic floor like that, this transversus abdominis, this contraction here at the belly kind of takes care of itself. The opposite is not true. Here we go. Right, take a breath, contract upward and inward, and eyes up. And, right, shoulders back. If you've got to move it, keep it in the frame of the hips. Off the center line is dangerous. You have shearing forces on your lumbar extensors. So make sure everything stays within the frame of the hips. Same on the way down. Knees go wide, and so. For those that do strength training, right, that lift weights, as a former personal trainer, it uh, used to irritate me a bit to see people do such quality work, to give such solid, rigorous attention to the quality of the work that they did in the squat rack or other related exercise and lose it 
when it comes to the Olympic event of picking up their socks. I want to just tie it in for you. I'm not going to use a barbell here. I'm just going to use a wooden staff, but you'll get the sense of it. For those that work right, in the squat rack, doing a wide squat, right, and you've got this thing, remember how you corset it yourself, either with a back belt or just with a core contraction. Right, down, and when you go up, eyes up and drive the pelvis forward. Again, in breath down, and up. I want you to hold to that image. Anything you're picking up off the floor, right? Same quality. Carry that weight on the shoulders. Down, and feel the weight on the shoulders. Imagine it there, and drive that contracted core forward, crown of the head to the heavens. For those of you that are distracted by my overwhelming sexual charisma, I do apologize. Anyway, coming to the core contraction, right? The TA contraction, which is TA short for transversus abdominis. If you think of the six pack muscles, right? It's the ones underneath. It's the ones, if you had a hernia, that would separate. It's the sheet of muscles that essentially hold your guts in. The TA contraction, Right? The way that you stabilize before you mobilize. Try this. Put your hand on your belly. Inhale. And as you exhale, leave the hand where it is and pull your belly away from that hand. Inward. Once more. To the hand. And exhale. Pull it away from. Not overly so. Right? Just that look when you're getting out of the shower naked and you want to look good for yourself in the mirror. Right? That same feeling. As we explored, right? learning to engage the inner thigh and coordinate it with a core contraction is really important right? for keeping your back safe. Because of the way that we move in modern society, we actually very rarely stimulate the hip joint the way it was designed to move. It's a, it's a ball and socket joint. It has full rotation. But we've paved the world and put 8-inch risers over the rest. So we very rarely right, stimulate the inner thigh. Unless you happen to do things like dance, martial arts, walk over uneven ground. So a way that you can stretch it, right, beyond just the functional application of the event of picking up socks or whatever else is in front of you, here's a couple very simple stretches that you can build into your day. Okay? If you're limited in your motion, right, just rest into it. Keep the knees over the feet right, and shift. All right, one side to the other. All right, you can rest your elbows on it if you have a little deeper range of motion and just settle into it. All right, and just let gravity all right, stretch the area through the groin and the inner thigh. For those of you that have a bit more range of motion or would like to challenge it, all right, you can do some lateral lunges, just so, side to side. Right, side to side. And if you want to challenge it even a bit more, look, Ma, no hands. Right, and move. And move. And rest. When you're looking for a stretch to increase range of motion, you want to make sure that the rest of the body is relaxed as possible. That's why. I don't have a lot of time right, for this sort of thing. You know, if the rest of the body, if you find your jaw is tight, if you find that you're sort of fighting yourself, find another way to stretch. All right, folks, welcome right, to the Olympic training camp and our first event, picking socks up off the floor. Just to recap, right, use functional imagery. Imagine yourself doing it with quality. Imagine that you're being judged by a panel of judges and you're going for the gold medal. Right? It's a very valid use of one's imagination and it gives a certain playfulness to something that is sometimes a heavy or an esoteric subject, this thing of mindfulness. Again, 
knees wide, the track over the center of the feet, in breath down, connect, contract, stabilize before you mobilize, eyes up, pubic bone forward, each and every time. The next event that we'll be looking at is how to put on your seat belt before you put your car into drive. I know this is a radical and advanced technique, but I'm sure you're going to find value in it and all the other fussy moments in life. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to sharing whatever our next event is with you. And until we see you next time, stay sharp, be strong.